How much do you know about submarines? Are you someone who has always been curious about how these transportation modes operate, particularly considering that they are utilized underwater? Well, you're in the right video, because today we're going to discuss submarines and even learn some surprising facts about how they work and carry explosives. Are you ready? Then let's get this started. According to history, approximately 5 megatons of explosives were used by nations during the Second World War. Look at this missile. This is the Trident II. This missile is capable of carrying 12 nuclear warheads, and if we're going to calculate their destructive force together, that would be around 5 megatons. What's really astonishing to learn is that the American Ohio-class submarine is capable of carrying not just one of this heavy explosive, but 24 pieces of Trident II missiles. This indicates that one submarine can be a deadly, disastrous, and unimaginable underwater vehicle. But don't worry. Submarines now carry less weaponry. This is mainly due to control agreements and practical considerations. However, there is still a potential that these boats might sneak up on any place unseen and launch an instant attack without anyone noticing it. So what distinguishes a submarine from an aircraft? Even though they are both part of Navy elements, an aircraft carrier is often large and intimidating. It can be seen rather easily. This is because countries could effectively demonstrate their dominance to the world using aircrafts. Submarines, on the other hand, are designed to be hidden underwater. This is because they serve as an undetectable force that may or may not launch a missile during the war. Moreover, submarines can cause fear, especially since an opponent can never be certain whether one is lurking off its coast and just waiting for the right time to shoot its explosive. It's vital to remember that the submarines that can launch ballistic missiles carrying nuclear warheads are frequently the most potent and the largest. Only the United States, United Kingdom, France, India, Russia, and China possess this type of submarine. On the other hand, indications showing that North Korea and Israel may possess nuclear-capable submarines are found by analysts. It's time to talk about the two different kinds of military submarines that serve two distinct purposes. The attack submarine is the first kind. This type is the most widespread. It tends to be smaller than the other submarines. In warfare, it commonly uses torpedoes, missiles with shorter ranges, and other weapons to strike nearby targets. The second kind is referred to as a ballistic missile submarine. These are often bigger and serve as the covert mobile launchers for nuclear missiles. Many believe that any nation's submarines would withstand any nuclear first strike and even has the capability to return the attack. The concept of mutual destruction between weapons during war is related to ballistic missile submarines. Let's say that the party being attacked had nuclear weapons that could withstand a nuclear attack, and if they responded to the attack, both of the parties would face serious damage. Because of this, many people believe that these submarines with nuclear missiles actually function as a sort of nuclear deterrence. These submarines occasionally require authorization in order to fire their missiles during some rare occasions. Each nation has its own unique approach to doing this. In the UK, each ballistic missile submarine has a letter that is kept in a secure location. The letter contains instructions on what the commander should do in the event that a nuclear attack destroys the UK. Normally, the manner of writing the letter happens as soon as the Prime Minister starts their reign, and each of which is destroyed without being read. Now that we've described the different types of submarines, let's talk about the American Ohio-class submarine. According to reports, this submarine can travel at least 800 feet beneath the surface of the ocean. The main disadvantage, especially in the modern age of satellite tracking, is that it can be found right away the moment it surfaces, thus losing its stealth capabilities. This also indicates that it's crucial for submarines to stay underwater for extended periods of time in order to go to various locations throughout the world undetected by their adversaries. Thankfully, most submarines are equipped with oxygen generators and desalinators, allowing their crew to survive while being submerged. However, the length of their deployment underwater is significantly impacted by their food supply rather than their oxygen supply. So what happens inside a submarine? There are so-called blue and gold crews. The blue crew will first operate the vessel while it is on patrol, and that patrol typically lasts 77 days. Despite the lengthy stay underwater, submarines are known to have the best dishes. We all understand the importance of eating. 
especially given that serving on a submarine is almost the most difficult profession. However, no matter how much they prepared to eat good food, submariners are sometimes forced to eat canned, dried, or frozen food due to the fact that fresh food may only be stored for a maximum of two weeks. In addition, a submarine's patrol is over if there's no more food to consume. When the patrol is over, the Blue Crew would return to the ship to either its home port or a port in an allied country. This is the time when the Gold Crew will arrive. Before heading back home, the Blue Crew must complete a 25-day rotation, refilling, and maintenance period. The Blue Crew will then experience further training before the process is repeated. The majority of the crew members have made it a habit to constantly follow the cycle. After eight hours of work, they would spend the remaining hours in training, performing maintenance, exercising, eating, and sleeping. These guys are pretty devoted to their work. Do you think you can do this as well? Before we continue, I just want to remind you that if you've made it this far into the video, you're clearly enjoying it. Give it a like, subscribe so you don't miss anything, and let us know what you think in the comment section. The largest submarines include the American Ohio-class submarine and the Boeing 747-400. These submarines measure more extensive loading times than the fuselage of an airplane, about 2.5 times longer. Even so, there is still a larger one. The Russian submarine Typhoon class is longer and wider than the American Ohio class submarines and the Boeing 747-400. Additionally, the Russian Typhoon class submarine is known as the largest submarine in the world. A sauna and a small pool could both fit inside due to its size. There are more amenities in the Russian submarine Typhoon class compared to the American Ohio class and other submarines. So what if the submarine is enormous. What's the big deal? Well, if it's big, lots of amenities can fit in, and if there are plenty of amenities, lots of activities can be done. Given that submarines will go three months underwater, they deserve these leisure activities. However, in some submarines, there is an open area that isn't used for work, and that is quite a waste. Moreover, submariners could work out. However, exercise equipment isn't organized, and they are typically found scattered in many places inside the submarine. When it comes to personal space, the personal space for a submariner on huge Ohio-class submarines is their tiny bed, whereas on smaller submarines, there is no true personal space, especially since most sailors share beds such as those in American Virginia class. On smaller submarines, there are more sailors than beds available. As a result, one sailor would sleep while the other is patrolling and vice versa. Submarines have less connection to the outside world as soon as they go underwater. However, there is still a way to communicate with them. There would be a huge email account assigned to each submariner where their families can send messages. However, messages sent to them are being reviewed first by the assigned crew member while they are on board. This is done to prevent the sailor from knowing information that they do not want them to know while they are on patrol. For instance, they might decide to withhold the news of the death of a family member in order to maintain crew morale. They believe it's better to share this information while the patrol is done, especially since there is practically no way to get sailors off. Communication in submarines is challenging. Other than the fact that they spend months underwater, the majority of the radio signals cannot travel in salt water as well. So how do submarines receive orders? Well, the only way for them to manage communication is through radio waves with very low frequencies. These are the only radio waves that can somewhat pass through water. VLA radio serves as the foundation of underwater communication systems because of this. Large VLF transmitters are used by several fleets. The U.S., for instance, has them in Maine, Washington, Hawaii, and other locations. India also has a transmitter on its southern coast, while Australia has a transmitter in Western Australia. These VLF emissions can travel through water and be detected by a submarine at a depth of up to 200 meters. The very low bandwidth of VLF, however, is one of its main drawbacks. It cannot even send real-time audio signals due to its limited capacity. The maximum text rate it can produce is around 700 words per minute. What submarines do is they deploy buoys to shallower depths for them to receive communications when they are submerged deeper. In some cases, because submarines' transmitters are often too small to reply using VLF frequencies, they have to go to shallow depths where they can respond using antennas. 
Modern submarines have the ability to quickly download and upload data using satellites. However, we can't deny the fact that VLF radio is still the most commonly used communication by the majority of submarines. Even with the emergence of other approaches, some new technologies and alternative systems created for usage when the primary systems are damaged. Navigation is also a challenge in addition to communication. Due to its usage of higher frequency waves that cannot travel through any depth of water, GPS and radar are both ineffective underwater. That is why sonar is used by submarines, because it is effective underwater. The submarine uses sonar to figure out its surroundings by producing a sound and then listening to it when the sound returns. However, by producing this sound, the submarine makes it fairly simple for others to locate it. The submarines can't use active sonar for them to stay hidden underwater. Instead, they rely on inertial navigation. Inertial navigation basically uses systems of accelerometers and gyroscopes to track a submarine's motions in relation to its most recent accurate GPS location. However, as time passes since the previous accurate reading, the system's accurately naturally declines. The readings will only be accurate to roughly 1.15 miles or 1.85 kilometers, 24 hours after the previous reading. Although the ocean is typically a huge open expanse, submarines have the possibility to collide with other submarines as well. Therefore, this strategy along with the use of maps is typically useful. This could prevent future incidents like the one that occurred on the night of February 3, 2009, when the British Navy's HMS Vanguard submarine accidentally collided with the French submarine Le Triomphant. Fortunately, they were moving slowly and no one got hurt. But given that both of these submarines were armed with nuclear bombs, there may have been a serious accident, and consequences of such are unimaginable. Even though they are typically depicted as being lovely, especially in cartoons, submarines are frequently dangerous, especially in times of accidents. When something turns out badly, submarines would just vanish deep into the water. Many countries that operate submarines have rescue subs that might be used to save submariners in times of misfortune. But truth be told, most of the time, submariners are never saved. When submarines go down due to systems malfunction, no one can find them. This indicates submariners ran out of oxygen underwater and were never saved. Because of this, it is extremely significant that advancements in submarine tracking technology coincide with the improvements in submarine disguises. While some think that everything will eventually be tracked, including underwater ones, submarines remain a crucial element of the Navy. Some countries maintain submarines because other countries have them as well. Additionally, they can only keep an eye on other submarines if they have their own submarine. Because of this, we can say that there are a lot of submarines out there, some of which may be waiting for the ideal moment to launch an attack. What are your thoughts on submarines? Are you now driven to become a submariner, or is it the opposite? Let us know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please click the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are posted. And as always, thanks for watching Ponder This.